Our Exchange Portland is a service exchange network of neighbors helping neighbors based on the currency of time. Uh, viewers might be familiar with the term time bank. Uh, we call it an Our Exchange program, but they are the same thing. Um, basically, um, our program is designed around core values, which include equality, uh, redefining work, respect, social capital, and what that means is that one hour equals one hour no matter what you do. So if I was to help you, say, give you a ride to the airport, and it took me an hour, I would earn one hour, one time credit, and then I could spend that time credit on services within the network. Currently, we have about 700 members in our time bank, and there are thousands and thousands of services offered. And we exchange approximately 20,000 hours per year. Um, HEP is about 16 years old, and how it started was our founder, who is Richard Rockefeller, was at a uh, conference and he heard Dr. Edgar Kahn speak. And Edgar is um, kind of the first person in this country to coin the idea of time credits, and, and he called it time banking. And he has a book called No More Throwaway People. Edgar was speaking at this conference, and Richard thought this was a was a great great at concept and he wanted to bring it back to his hometown uh, near here in Portland. And what he did is he started, he got together a steering committee of people, um, people he knew and he invited people from the community and they came together and I think there was maybe 25 people or so that decided to come and hear about this new concept called time banking. And what they really did is they just did it. They started a mini time bank and they started exchanging with each other and it was very informal. Um, back then we used to use a program called Timekeeper so that people could track their exchanges and it really was just a very uh, basic tool, counting tool. And kind of out of this, this seed of an idea, um, Richard brought time banking to the community and it's, it's grown over the years. We've had um, you know, at times we've exchanged 25,000 hours a year, sometimes 15,000. It's um, gone through many different um, incarnations. Um, most of us are immersed in capitalism and we only think about getting things one way, which is you get a job, you earn some money, and then you pay other people to do things for you. But that's actually a very short period in our history as human beings and consumers. And we often think of time banking as a return to the village model, where you know somebody had eggs and somebody else was a blacksmith and somebody else was a teacher and, and they came together to create a community and to share knowledge and services with each other so that people could get the things that they need to create civilization. You know, 20, 20 or 30 years ago, there just, there just seemed to be this um, embracing of money and what that meant and, and it seemed like I often, I often use this um, adage that like the fish doesn't know it's wet you know so it's like we're all operating in this system but very few of us really understand money and money really was just created as a tool to get the things that we want and it created like this middle person this, this middle system and then the people that created the money and moved the money and all of that, yeah, it's an efficient system. Capitalism does some things very, very well, but there's other things that it doesn't do very well. So when we look at our exchange, Portland, or time banking, we look at it, yeah, we look at it in terms of a complementary currency, and it's another tool to help us community create the type of community that it wants, and ultimately that means the citizens getting the things that they need. We often joke that, you know, we'd love it if someday you could pay your electric bill, CMP, with, with time credits, you know. And there are some communities where you can work off, um, say, you're part of your tax bill um, for, for time credits, so you, you contact your town hall, your city hall, and you make an arrangement with them. So I think there's lots of ways in which community currencies can complement the system that we operate in. Um, 
there's there's a process for becoming a member. Uh, you can log on to our website, which is ourexchangeportland.org, H-O-U-R, exchangeportland.org. There's an online application which has references. So you fill out your application, uh, you contact your references and let them know that you're going to be using them. And we get the paperwork here. You can also come into the office where we're located at 516 Congress Street in Portland, pick it up, fill it out, paper form if you're so inclined. Um, and then we ask our members to come to an orientation where we kind of go over the ground rules of how a service exchange works. And we often, sometimes people um, think of us as a volunteer service. Um, the government recognizes it as volunteer services. They're friendly favors, they're untaxed. Um, we call our members members, they're not volunteers because they're earning and spending time on, the, on what they do. So you fill out your application, you come to an orientation that takes about an hour. You learn the nuts and bolts of how it operates, which include things like, um, you know, responding in a timely manner to a request. Uh, we have a program that which, was, which was developed by a member named Stephen Beckett, and it's called Time and Talents, and it's kind of the new incarnation of the tracking system. It lists all of the members and all of their services. So to put it crudely, it's kind of like uh, eBay for people. You know, you can go on to Time and Talents, you can type in um, that you're looking for a dog walker or a haircut or access to health care or tickets to the theater or something like that. And it will then list the contact information for the people that are in the network that offer those services. And then you can contact them directly, either through, uh, mostly through email, but you can do it through tele calling them. Um, we find that probably the biggest challenge is that well, people will come to us and they'll say, oh, I don't know, I don't know what to offer. And then we get talking to them and we say, well, what do you like to do? You know, a lot of times there's stuff that people do in their paid gig, and then there's the things, their heart work, the stuff that they really like to do. And so we kind of, we try to talk to them about that and say, well, what do you really want to do? Because if you're being an accountant nine to five, you may not want to do that after hours, but maybe you make great egg rolls or you um, really enjoy the flute and you could teach somebody else how to play the flute. So, um, and then sometimes the, another challenge is, is that people often want the same services, like massage therapists are always in demand and house cleaning. And I always tell people, um, it's a, we're also kind of a supply and demand. There's the finite amount of time and you, people often want the same things and those are the type of things they want over and over again, you know, monthly massage or getting the house clean every few weeks. So we, we often have to ask people, well, what other kind of things are you looking for so that they can find opportunities to, to spend their time credits? Maybe on things that they um, really would like to do but they hadn't had the money to do and they hadn't thought about, oh, you know, somebody can give me painting lessons or, um, you know, somebody could teach me kayaking to, out to the islands off the coast of Maine. Um, we have a, about a 10-year relationship with True North Health Care Services, and what that means is that our members are able to access health care services for time dollars. And that is a great relief for people who may be uninsured or don't have enough insurance. And it's a comfort for them to know that when they're able to, they can earn time doing what they love to do, and then in, in exchange for that, access health care. Um, of our approximately uh, five to six hundred members, 170 of them are healthcare practitioners. So not only do we have a large group of artists, we have a large group of healthcare practitioners. Some of them belong to groups like True North or Turn the Tide, which is also a consortium of practitioners, but we also have individual practitioners. And they often tell us that they like being part of our exchange because it helps them to build their small business. So if they're massage therapists that's starting out, which is always um, in demand in the in the world, um, and they're new here, they can they can build their client base. And everything from cranial sacral, Reiki, you name it, there's probably a healthcare practitioner in the hour exchange that does that. And one third of our hours are for healthcare, which is huge. So often we, we'll hear from people around the country, around the state, about this is a great idea now what what do I do to get started and um, there's a lot of there's different things you can do there's a lot of resources um, one you can contact us at 207-874-9868 and talk to us about it we do have a 
uh, a regional training program where we actually train people to help start their own time banks. And we go through all the legal issues, the insurance issues, and 501c3 and fiduciary responsibilities and all of that kind of stuff. But 